beep. What is up, ninjas? My name is Sam World, and welcome to the Complete Guide to Master Diva. In the first few episodes, you learned what every knob does in Diva and how it all comes together to help you make some sounds. And now we're going to get even more practical by looking at some of the sounds in the genre that Lane 8 and Yodo reside in. Now, the cool thing is Lane 8 has been very open about using Diva, and it's, it'll be cool to kind of remake some of the sounds that we have here uh, because we can kind of get very close to it. There's one of them that's still giving me issues, but it's close enough. Other than that, guys, hopefully this video helps you and inspires you to make your own sounds. And if you want to support the channel, evilsounds.com, that's where you can find all of my sound design work. And let's get started with this video. All right, guys, and welcome inside of Diva. Now, the first sound we're going to use sort of inspiration is going to be the Lane 8 sound from the track Run with Casablanca, which is going to be the top melody playing this. And we're going to init mini mono for this. And it's going to sound like... So don't worry much about the MIDI programming as we're going to shape this sound utilizing Diva. So the first thing about the sound that you're going to hear is that it's a saw. It's very important for you, for you to understand, okay, that's a saw, that's a square whenever you hear it. And again, you can practice that as you hear your favorite songs in the car, etc. Just kind of have an open mind like, okay, I think that's a saw, etc. From here, we're going to shape this by act activating the releases. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us for decay here to have a bit of a release to it. And we're going to lower down the sustain. So that way now we're going to get something that sounds like... You can see it sort of fades out and from there you control that with this so let's lower it down just a tiny bit more on both now from here we're going to lower the cutoff down a bit just so that we can get a little bit of a warmer response by not opening the filter all the way up okay we're going to add plate reverb obviously it's needed Okay, very nice sound already. I'm gonna actually lower this down an octave it. I like the sound of that. Now from here, Lane 8 actually has, I believe it's another sound that's gonna be more wide with a bunch of chorus. We're gonna emulate this by utilizing oscillator two and three as layers for this sound that are gonna be up an octave or up eight inches. So 16 inch, eight inch. Uh, that just means again, up an octave as we move from the left to the right. Okay. Now from there, there's a couple of possibilities in the way that the sound was crafted because there's this really cool kind of pitch bend that occurs in the sound. We can emulate this with a chorus by utilizing either a dramatic uh, taste. So as you guys know, this is just the, the vibe that you get from the chorus. Of course, it's going to duplicate your sound and it's going to modulate the, the pitch as well as sometimes even the timing. And depending on the chorus, you have a certain amount of voices. Like it gets duplicated three, five, six. It just depends. From here, we can kind of create sort of like this pitch sort of drift, analog drift to the sound by applying a high def, maybe low rate and the thing is you can kind of hear how it kind of like the, the the pitch is not stable and that adds a more interesting vibe to the sound and that's really cool the other way we can do this is by applying fm now as you guys know in diva we don't have um we're not going to have face FM or the face modulation that occurs with FM8 or Ableton's FM synth. Uh, no, uh, Diva is actually doing actual frequency modulation. So as we do FM1, it's routing the saw into these guys, and it's going to create, again, some change in the frequency modulation, a.k.a. the pitch, which I believe it's called exponential FM. Uh, it's not going to be linear, and it's not going to be, the, again, the FM8 one. <laughs> And there we get the pitch. And then you can you can make it go crazy if you want. And from there we have a nice little sound. And if you want it wide, put a chorus. But of course, you know we're gonna have one uh, lead down the center while the you're gonna have a layer that's gonna kind of go with it. But that's how we create a very similar. And there's a pitch strip. Okay, cool. So that's going to be the first sound. And again, uh, we're going to be done with that. Now, the next sound we're looking at, guys, is going to be another Lane 8 sound from Fingerprint, which is going to sound like this. So we're going to have a very similar vibe. And again, we're going to utilize other features of Diva to create the sound. So we're going to go presets, and we're just going to init mini mono again. From there... 
we're gonna shape the sound now of course we're gonna put the release on and i think the release always sounds good even on 808 kind of basses etc but we're just gonna lower the decay maybe we're gonna lower the cutoff and use the envelope to open it We can add a bit of a key follow to this so that as it plays higher notes, it opens a slight bit just to kind of make it sound a little more interesting. From here, we're going to go with a with a square kind of sound. So as you guys know, from square to here, we're doing a bit of pulse width uh, change to the square, which just makes it sound a little thinner. You can utilize the scope to see that. Dinner, 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 open. From there, I'm gonna layer a saw with it. And from there, let's put a bit of a rotary on this, which is the key to the sound. Now, as you guys know, the rotary is meant to emulate a Leslie cabinet, which again, I don't know what it is. I've never used one and it's okay if you don't, uh, but it's all good. We're gonna lower this the stereo down so that we get it in the center. We're gonna put a bit of delay to this. Now, of course, since it's a sound that's playing a lot and it's more lower frequency, we're going to lower the decay time, have a higher size so that the free, uh, the reverb doesn't have too much high frequencies. As you guys know, the lower the size, the more high frequencies start to come out. From here, we can kind of play with this. is that as he kind of progresses the song he plays around with according to him he likes to play around with like three knobs in the synth no more than that so there's a couple of things that happen uh, obviously the release gets longer in certain sections of the song so you get more like but you can do a lot of really cool stuff with that and again you can also use a delay As you can see, that rotary knob does a lot, and it's what gives that sound, that interesting vibe that you hear in the late eight song. And I, I think it's super cool sound. Again, as you guys can see, very basic, but that's what I like about Diva. A lot of times when you utilize other synths like Serum and stuff, there's so many complex things you can do that it sometimes just hinders creativity because you're always stuck with choice paralysis, meaning you, you never feel like the sound is done. At least with Diva, you got everything you can do there. If you want to make stuff interesting, again, we can kind of play around more with the settings here. And again, watch the series if you want to know how to utilize the stuff. But again, very simple sound, very tasteful, and it makes the track. From there, we're going to move on to a sound that honestly, I... I can't get it to sound 100% identical, but really close. And the thing that throws me off is I do not know what he modulated as the song progresses. Now, this is going to be Atlas. Um, and again, we're just going to run um, the mini mono preset again. And the melody is going to be... Now, there's a couple of ways to tackle this sound. Whenever I hear these kind of sounds, I will immediately think either square with a filter to shape and not have it give all the upper harmonics aka high frequencies away or a triangle wave and this sound in particular there's very ways we can go about it i'll show you guys the two different ways the first way is we can go with triangles as this is going to give you a sort of a similar vibe as if a square was filtered and not opened all the way from here we're going to lower the cutoff down and we're going to utilize again the beautiful release And then from there, we can put a bit of play to make it come alive. Not too much because, again, it's just going to swamp it, but lower the decay. And you can kind of hear what we have. So we're, now the thing here with the sound is we're going to lower down an octave of a, of a triangle. So that you can kind of see how it kind of dampens the top sound so it doesn't sound like... But it sounds more like a little meatier, more batter. Now from here, this is where it gets very, yeah, I mean, 
I for sure know the sound has been distorted in some way. So from there, um, utilizing Diva, I can utilize a Rotary. Obviously, we want this to be mono. see how there's a bit of phasing out that is occurring that could be because of the plate the way we have the signal flow of this so we can go rotary there and we can go plate here so that way it's more from there maybe we can shape the same because we don't want that much bass. and let's go with a delay instead i think that would be more tasteful You got to be really careful with this as the sound will get routed back when we use the feedback as distortion. Again, the feedback is good for adding more harmonics into the sound, but you got to be really careful. way we can go about this the other way is we can utilize squares um and from there this is kind of going to give us this kind of vibe here we're going to use a bit of emphasis to kind of boost that frequency where the filter cuts off and make the rest sort of more down which in essence what we're doing is we're just kind of taming the bottom layer we're going to add a keyboard You can kind of say yes or no. But this is where this sound gets hard because there's a distinct quality to that sound and the way that it sounds. There's something about it that just gives it that thing that you just hear it and go, wow, that's really nice, interesting. Where it's just like you can go that. The other way I could go layer a, a triangle and a square like so. Get rid of the rotator. Now, the cool thing about the triangle is that, again, when we open it, you can kind of see that kind of gives us more of the vibe that Lainey has in his track, especially when he opens it up. We add a bit of noise because later on in the song, the sound is layered with the noise. That bottom layer because or else it's gonna sound like sort of like you're at the hospital with a bleep machine but i know this sound has been ran through some sort of distortion mainly because of the way that it sounds it sounds kind of held together and saturation and distortion will give you a compression effect Guys, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a rolling bass, and for this I'm gonna init MS Rep, which is the MS13 in my opinion. It has the look of it, and in all honesty, this combination that we have here just has a lot of bite. Which to me, you know, if I'm gonna make a rolling bass, I'm gonna go with this combination. From here, we're gonna go with the saw, and we're gonna play this pattern. So the first thing I want to do here now is I'm actually going to go into the trimmer section in the transient mode. I'm going to have oscillator reset, which is going to give me a retrick. With rolling basses, you always want that. So the face always starts at the beginning. So you always get the bass sounding rough and, and good rather than um, always like de -de 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 um, kind of shake, shake, shake. If you're making side trance, rolling bass, you want to do this unless you like the way that it changes. From here, we're going to go with the cutoff down to shape the sound with envelope two. 
And from here, we're just going to mess with the decay. Okay, notice how this filter here, the HPF fight is adding a lot, because if I lower that down, it's giving me a lot of buy, um, a lot of um, uh, low end. And the reason for this is that when, you know, I've had a Korg MS-20, and one of the techniques that we have is the fact that this synth doesn't have that much low end to it power. Uh, we can utilize the high pass filter that it has in order to boost some of that low end range where we're going to be at. Now from here, let's shake. Gonna add another layer here, maybe like an H pulse, just because the saw's already giving us a lot of power and the H pulse is thinner. The bite on this is just crazy how it sounds. From here, we can change the flavor and this is gonna be one of those filters where you can really hear it. Okay, cool. I like this combination. We can also go with the square. Now, if you want, for some reason, you want to add, um, let's say, a bit of, um, let's say, a bit of like punch to this sound, then we can utilize envelope two here by putting it like so. We're going to kind of cancel this guy out. We're going to use this like so. And you can make it even sound even more punchier. From here, we can maybe route envelope one now. Uh, but again, some of the fattest bass lines will be made in Diva by you guys utilizing this stuff. So that's going to be our role there. All right, guys. Now, the next song we're going to make is going to be from a Yodo song. And we're going to init mini mono. But in all honesty, I think it's the preset that when you first open up um, Diva, it's that one. Uh, but we're going to make it ourselves. We're going to just utilize one saw for this. We're going to use a cutoff. And then we're going to open the sound like so. Uh, down an octave. We're going to add a bit of attack and release. And we're going to make that two-bridge sound. We're going to put the decay release like so. Lower this down. From there, we probably don't want to open it up that much. And if you want to give it a bit of resonance, you can. But we're gonna... little plate. And there we go. Let's just... It's going to be a little slower. Open it up more. Just get that nice tuba sound. There we go. Maybe a bit of uh, FM here. It doesn't do anything because we're running that. Okay, sounds good. From there, uh, one of the things he does, you can kind of hear, is a bit of modulation to the sound. We can use LFO 2 for this and automate that. Let's go with a saw, maybe a triangle, and then we're just going to have it go at maybe 116 to do... That way you can give it that. Just that last nice thing. If you want it more like, doo -doo -doo -doo, then we go with the saw down. And more harder there. Okay, now if let's get a little fancy. If you want the sound to sound a little different every time it hits, we can kind of put here um, a voice map. Um, yeah, voice map modulator moving to the right. From there, we can now utilize these numbers. And we can kind of have every time the sound plays a different voice, uh, give us different values here for fun. So it's going to sound something like this. Check it out. And I think that's super cool. Kind of like. If you want to do that, I mean, I just want to add that to the sound. I mean, the sound itself doesn't have it, but I always think it's super cool. And of course, we're going to go divine on this. And if you want to get warmer, just put it down. So there we go, babe. Vibrato or go mono. 
Okay, so that's gonna be more of a two bridge sound, very easy to make, etc. Now let's move on to another one. Let's do uh, maybe like a re seventh sort of bass, utilizing saws with a bit of a reverse to it, which I've heard in an Ander home track. The way we're gonna do this is first let's get the lowest octave we can get. So there we go. We're gonna go with that. Sounds fat as hell already. <laughs> and we're gonna go here and go negative five on this guy. Get it right at five, and we're gonna put it up an octave. Maybe with one more. Uh, there we go. We're gonna add a chorus to make it wide. Maybe the depth down. If possible, we can get in. Let's be careful. Now from here, the tune mod, I'm gonna send it to all of these guys and go reverse. And we're just gonna no release. I love the sound. Envelope, uh, we're gonna use maybe envelope one here to open it up for us, like a bit. Lower the cutoff, a high release, so. And we wanna be in mono for this so that we don't have overlapping bass notes. It's asking for it. And then if we add a bit of delay to that, we can get really some really interesting stuff. High feedback. We'll leave it as that. And we'll put a little bit of emphasis. Okay, and then from there, if you want to layer another saw, like, very high up so that when you open it, it's there. Alright, so reverse. Again, we control that reverse with the decay here. Uh, really cool sound. So the last thing we'll do guys here and then the tutorial will make a bass utilizing the Juno uh, in essence the Juno um, Kit we can kind of say that I guess and we'll do a square for this. Maybe uh, We're not gonna use that. We're gonna move down Just a standard kind of nice art batsy kind of bass we can go with a square for now. We're gonna open the envelope We're gonna use one of these saw shapes just because we have a, a, a square already giving us a lot of low end. So I kind of want to go with a saw that has a bit more upper harmonics to it and maybe from their PWM it so it's thinner. We're gonna leave the rough color on it. I always feel like it makes it sound a little more interesting. And we probably could have gone with this filter for the lane eight sound to be honest. From there, Let's see, we can kind of get a little better. I like this. From there, let's add a bit of delay, which can play, but we're going to utilize the high pass here to get rid of the lows. And then we can control the volume. No center, I want the side only. Feedback, how often? Give it a bit of wow. The thing with these guys is you can definitely put reverb, but you have to be able to kind of get the low end out of there. Very tasteful. Bit of pre-delay. Level it. Okay, now here we do have a sub oscillator and that's only gonna be useful if we are gonna be here with this guy. Okay, 
because now we have that sub level low increase the blowing and that just gives us a sub at the bottom so again we, we don't really have need for the square like so but super cool and then if you want to add noise and And again, if you want to get fancy, we can go into our trimmer and have the the one the, the frequency always change on it slightly, not too much, but it just gives a different vibe. And if you want it always to be strong, oscillator reset or retrim. Can add a bit of change here with now uh, a voice map stack. No change here. So And it's as fun as that, guys. But anyways, guys, that's going to be the end of the tutorial. Hopefully, you enjoyed watching me make these sounds. And hopefully, it inspires you to give it a shot. Again, Diva, while it might look very intimidating, once you know how to utilize it, it's a lot of fun. And the cool thing is that, as you can see, it gives really great analog sounds. And it does that really well. You can definitely make, like, duff seppy sounds in this, which I think we'll probably make a video on for fun. But in all honesty, the power of Diva comes when you're utilizing it, what it's for, those analog wavetables, making 808 bass hits. Um, melodic saw leads, etc. Other than that, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, make sure to hit like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll catch you guys next time for another video. Take care, peace out, and you guys have a great rest of your day.